Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. In the fight against Boko Haram, scores of Nigerian soldiers have died. The dead have since been buried and essentially forgotten by the nation. Another 66 soldiers are waiting to die. They are going to die not in the hands of Boko Haram, but in the hands of the Nigerian government. Early in the year, the Nigerian military tried and sentenced these 66 soldiers to death for mutiny. Our next guest was a lawyer who defended 59 of those soldiers during their trial. In an interview with the Washington Post in May, he said the following about the soldiers. They joined the army to fight, not to commit suicide. He is the famed human rights attorney as well as a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano. Mr. Falano, welcome to Sarah TV. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to okay. be with you. Okay. Before we start, I want to play for our viewers at home a clip of the immediate past chief of defense staff, Air Marshal Alex Bade, speaking recently. So let them watch, and then we'll come back, and I will get you. Yeah. All right. I understand that the video is now ready, and we'll get back to that when, when the video is ready. But let me ask you, based on um, some people have suggested that based on some of the things we had about how the military in the last four years handled the budget, the money they had for the budget, uh, that the military should review the sentences passed on these soldiers um, for deserting their formation or for being willing, unwilling to fight. What is your take on that? Well, the last four years, um, the government of Nigeria uh, they marked about five trillion naira. Um, for the defense of the country. Um, but I knew all along, based on information at my disposal, that uh, the bulk of the fund was diverted and cornered by some uh, military chieftains. And that is what has just been confirmed now by Air Marshal Alex Bade. Uh, but beyond that, I did say in the course of the trial of some of the soldiers, and I continue to maintain, because I'm still defending some of the soldiers and uh, officers, um, my, my position is that these guys were not ready to fight. Um, they were not motivated. They were not uh, uh, equipped. No adequate weapons. Uh, no modern gadgets was given to them to fight the Boko Haram troops. And that accounts for the reason why we have suffered, suffered a lot of, uh, you know, uh, misfortune in the battlefield. It is particularly shameful that uh, the immediate past chief of defense staff can now tell the old world why he was leaving the military that uh, we have sent boys to the war front to commit suicide, because that is the implication of this uh, statement. Mm. All right, Mr. Falano, let's pause and play that videos for our viewers so that they will have an idea of what we're talking about. All right. I wrote down memory then. I think the last time any piece of equipment was bought for the Nigerian Army was on APCs that were bought in, nine, in 2006. We heard last week from the former National Security Advisor, uh, Sambo Dasuki, or essentially this week he said that weapons that the former president, Jonathan, bought, that it, they, they have not been delivered. Um, you said in that interview in Washington Post that there, there was a crisis. He said, this is a quote, they have a, they have a crisis in the Nigerian military, and they are trying to use these boys to make a point. Do you think the extent of the crisis in the military uh, you, that we underestimated what was going on? Well, uh, I think uh, if you are referring to the statement just made yesterday by um, Colonel uh, Sambo Dasuki, that the weapons they placed orders for uh, were yet or are yet to arrive in the country. As far as I'm concerned, that is a response to the ongoing investigation of his office, as well as uh, uh, all the funds. The government is uh, looking into uh, the funds that were, you know, 
are located for acquiring weapons. That is why that statement is now being made. As far as I'm concerned, uh, those weapons were not meant to come to the country. I think others were deliberately placed when the government was removed. I mean, when the uh, when a new government came into office. Mm -hmm. As far as these guys are concerned, the funds have disappeared. You know, uh, and, and that is what is going on. Mm. Now, what should now happen to the soldiers that were sentenced to death, in your view? What do you think, want to see? Well, I, I think there has to be a, a, a thorough investigation uh, into how we came to this very shameful uh, situation and why military, the top military brass, sent boys to the battlefront with that weapon, and why the whole nation was being told, particularly by Badia and Minima, that uh, the soldiers were adequately equipped, they were well motivated to fight and combat or contain insurgents in the Northeast. Now that it's clear that these guys were deceiving the nation, uh, beyond the investigation being conducted by the government, these guys are certainly suspects, should be reported to the Special Prosecutor of the um, International Criminal Court. Because what they have clearly done, uh, they have committed crimes against humanity by wasting hundreds of soldiers who they knew could not uh, uh, fight the insurgents. Mm -hmm. Now, they were also, that period when CNN and other news outlets were reporting even statements from soldiers saying the same thing you are saying now, and the military authorities, they all came out to condemn that and say that these are uh, people being used by opposition members, that they were lying. Um, do you think it's just the military hierarchy that should be held accountable for deceiving the nation, or should that go beyond that? Uh, it, it, it's the military hierarchy, together with the um, uh, 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 former immediate past uh, national security advisor, who in fact usurped the functions of the Minister of Defense and took over uh, the business of procuring arms for the country. Uh, it's now clear that uh, uh, an advisor on uh, military matters turned himself into the Minister of Defense as well as uh, uh, a contractor for the government in terms of procuring arms which were never supplied, which were never made available to the soldiers. And in the course of uh, going around purportedly acquiring weapons, the country was also disgraced. In the case of South Africa, where raw cash to the tune of about $50 million um, was cutted out of the country without declaring the funds here, as well as in South Africa, of course, uh, Colonel Dasuke. Uh, as uh, uh, is here to explain uh, why he decided to flout the uh, money laundering laws of uh, both Nigeria and South Africa. So there has to be a lot of questions that will have to be answered by these guys. The service chiefs who have just retired, uh, their predecessors, their immediate predecessors, because one of them has also been linked uh, by some people with the committing crimes against humanity. Mm. But there are some people in the north, there's a group of elders who are saying that the pre former president, uh, Jonathan, should also be tried. What is your view on that? He's the commander-in-chief of the military. Well, I have nothing but pity for uh, President Jonathan. I don't think he can really be brought in here uh, here I was a guy who really didn't know much about uh, military affairs, who was uh, hoodwinked or rather misled into believing that these guys were acquiring weapons. And he was being uh, given fantastic stories uh, with respect to what was going on in the battlefront. So he, had, uh, he really didn't get uh, correct information from these guys. Anytime they ask for money, he makes funds available to them. What you can accuse him of, perhaps, is negligence um, in terms of uh, being the commander in chief of the armed forces who didn't know what was going on, you know, in the military. Mm. That's, he can be accused of negligence 
but certainly not for crimes against humanity. Mm. Now, we could say Jonathan didn't know uh, but about the military and what goes on there. But we know that, um, that the current president uh, came from the military. Do you think he's making the right move? And do you think that will help to resolve this issue of uh, soldiers sentenced to death? I think it's uh, so far uh, uh, taking some appreciable measures towards containing insurgency in the Northeast region. Uh, it's already normalized relations with uh, our neighbors, because the relationship between uh, our neighbors and Nigeria was really uh, very bad. We, we didn't have the United Front uh, in terms of confronting uh, the Boko Haram sect, the dreaded Boko Haram sect. Um, for example, Buhari has already normalized relationships with our neighbors. Uh, then the Republic, uh, uh, Chad, Niger, and Cameroon are already, you know, have agreed to work with Nigeria, and they are fighting together, you know, the multinational force uh, under the command of uh, Nigeria is uh, doing a lot now. Uh, the president has also normalized relations with the West um, in terms of uh, getting weapons uh, to fight terrorism. Even the United States government that was not prepared to sell arms to Nigeria, you know, on account of uh, massive violations, is beginning to have a second thought because there are moves being made concretely by the current government to address the concerns of the United States, of uh, Amnesty International, and other local and international human rights bodies. Mm. Now, here at Sahara TV, we do talk to military people, and they have the opinion that after the arrest and trial of these soldiers, that there were no other cases of mutiny, which saying that people now in the military now knew there will be consequences for that. Um, what do you think about that position, that for the people in the military, they still think that the issue was discipline, not about motivation? Well, I think what happened last year, which was very unfortunate, was that between September and uh, December, uh, about 88 boys were put on trial. At the end of the day, 70 of them were sentenced to death. Uh, but the way we went about the campaign to let the world know that this was a clear case of uh, uh, planned mass murder in the sense that none of the boys who really be justifiably charged under, you know, a mutiny, uh, because there was nothing mutinous in the action. They simply asked for weapons that were ready to fight, but give us the weapons, equip us militarily, I mean, uh, adequately, as required by the Constitution, and were ready to defend the territorial integrity of our fatherland. The military authorities had no answer to the legitimate question being asked by the soldiers. And they simply set up uh, a court marshal uh, to liquidate them. But we took advantage of the media system to educate Nigerians and the world of the atrocity that was taking place, you know, in those courts. I think at the end of it, it has still become very, very difficult for uh, the military authorities to uh, repeat what happened last year. Hence, between January and May this year, about 1,000 soldiers were simply dismissed, uh, or again illegally. But, but for the way and manner the other cases were handled, all of them would have been put on trial for meeting. Mm. Now, uh, one last question. The military, they were saying that uh, armed forces, uh, that they are not like a regular organization where you form a union and decide that you don't want to work because of certain situations. Is there any way that military members could complain about uh, the state of their uh, workplace without uh, okay. breaking uh, the law? Well, this is, no, actually, this is a legal matter. And I have tried to impress it on the military authorities for almost years now, but I appreciate that we are facing a very democratic dispensation. Uh, which requires that the rights of soldiers be respected. 
uh, on that section 217 of the Constitution, it is stipulated there that the government of Nigeria adequately equipped the armed forces. If the armed forces are not equipped, that is a constitutional violation on the part of the government. And if the government has military authorities that should demand that the constitution with by the government go around deceiving the public and send to the uh, to the war front without adequately equipping them. Uh, soldiers have the right to complain. And under Section 69 of the Armed Forces Act, any soldier who asks a question uh, and make inquiries with respect to his service in the military shall have answers provided within a certain period, not more than three months. Besides that, there are cases, we had it in Akure, when some soldiers uh, protested. These were soldiers who had fought in Liberia and whose uh, operational allowances were stolen. They protested, they had the demonstration in Akure, and they were put on trial. So mutiny. I made it clear to the authorities since I defended them, 28 of them, that there was no basis since uh, you know those who have stolen their money should go after those guys instead of wasting these boys. Of course, they were sentenced to life imprisonment. Uh, at the end of the day, I was able to convince the higher authorities to commit the sentences initially to seven years and later to absolute pardon. Before then, we have had the situation in Egypt. I think this was 2003. The late Chief Jennifer Amy defended those boys, 22 of them, who again were injured in Liberia and Sierra Leone, and Sierra Leone uh, because the authorities here could not treat them. The hospitals were not equipped. So they were taken to Egypt. In Egypt, they were denied their medical allowances. And so when they were to be brought back home, again, they had a protest at the airport. The military brought them back home and put them on trial for military. Of course, they were convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. But the Court of Appeal vacated the, the, the sentence and the conviction on the ground that these soldiers are Nigerian, first of all, before joining the military. And that the fact that you join the Army or the Navy or Air Force has not denied you your basic right as Nigerian citizens, your fundamental right to ask questions as a Nigerian your fundamental right to have your right to liberty and your right to life respected. The fact that I joined the army presupposes that I'm going to fight for my fatherland if I'm equipped. But if you have not given me the weapons to fight for my fatherland and you ask me to go and fight, you are simply asking me to commit suicide, which is a criminal offense under our law. Mm. Thank you so much, Mr. Falano, for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay. That has been uh, Mr. Femi Falano, the lawyer defending the soldier sentenced to death for mutiny. When we come back, we are going to talk to you about uh, Africa and all the African stories in the news in the Africa edition. So stay tuned.